Welcome back to the channel. This video is on environmental science. We're looking at human populations and demographics, and we're looking in more detail on the age structure diagrams or the population pyramids and looking at different types of pyramids, what they mean, the shape, what it indicates in terms of demographic issues and demographic stats and data, and looking across at different examples of countries with these kinds of pyramid shapes or age structure diagrams. This is the Earth Science Classroom. A large portion of the environmental science curriculum is dedicated to populations and human and the effect that humans have on the environment. But to start with, you have to figure out the actual immense number and distribution and density of humans in certain areas of the world. Now, this looks at urbanization, cities versus rural, but demographics is a case of looking at stats and kind of analyzing these stats in terms of making sense of what they're showing. And one way of making sense of these stats is to focus or put those stats and data into a population pyramid or an age structure diagram. There we can see a nice simple graph that is going to show some demographic trends, demographic patterns, and the data in a way that we can analyze and discuss. Here is a generic age structure diagram or population pyramid and how we get these is through a census. So every country that has the means will have a census every 5, 10 or 20 years and the census will provide information and data on the population of that country and the age of the people that live in that country and it will produce a diagram or graph like this where it can divide or separate the population of males and females into their respective age group range and this particular diagram there's 18 different ranges or or levels of age starting from birth at age zero up to the oldest age group of 85 plus so that could be 85 up to anything as long as they live so in terms of like say Japan where people live a generally longer life could have over a hundred years old um, population in that country or let's say a third world country that is less developed may only have a population diagram that goes up to the 65 or 70 age range. So this diagram is showing you males on the left hand side and females on the right hand side and the percentage of the population that is in that age group. For example, the female and male population aged between 0 and 4 in this diagram is the greatest amount of people that live in that country. So the greatest population age group is between 0 and 4 years old. So you can have a generic trend or pattern that is evident in this diagram which shows that there is a lot of births as a high fertility rate in this country denoted or shown by a large population of children both male and female between the ages of zero and four so every country will have its own shape its own patterns and trends on its own population pyramid and the first thing we can really look at in this population pyramid and diagram is to split it into the three groups of populations based on age and their functionality within the system, within the country, within the infrastructure. How is this three groups going to affect the country as a whole? So these three groups are divided into, based on age, is the young or pre-reproductive and juvenile age between 0 and 14. Then we have the adult group, which is mostly the labor force of that country or potential labor force of that country, which is the, also the age of reproduction, which is between 15 years to 44. Then we have a continued group of labor force, which is post-reproductive, which is 45 to 65. Again, based on the country, that could be fluctuated based on if the woman can get pregnant at certain ages with additional medical help but that's generally how we divide it. And then the final group is the older generation, the old population of females and males that are above 65 years old, which again is gonna look at the retired, the non-labor force, and of course the post-reproductive age. And the general shape of the pyramid can indicate the division or separation of these three groups within that country and that would lead to more patterns and trends that could happen today in terms of the current situation and future predictions on the country's population issues. 
So an age structure diagram or population pyramid can be used for basic patterns and trends and indicators. And a demographic indicator could be a the shape of the pyramid itself or looking in more detail into each stage of the pyramid and shape and what that tells us. For example, the wide base in this diagram could indicate a high fertility rate. So the TFR could be high and it could indicate also whether the country is an MEDC, which is more economically developed country versus a LEDC, which is less economically developed country. And that also lead to the developed or developing label of a country and also indicate the stages of the DTM, the demographic transition model and the stages one through five and where that country lies within that model and within the economic levels of each country and also the education levels, the amount of labor force which will indicate the amount of people working, that will indicate the industries, the commerce, the trade, the general economic stability of that country and how many people are working versus not working, the age and population of the older group of over 65 which are not working generally which are more collecting benefits from the government and welfare programs and not adding to the taxes so again the population in terms of groups and where they lie is very important you can also look at immigration and emigration so who's leaving who's coming in the age and are they able to work they're going to provide for the country or live off the country and can they can that country survive in that situation? Also looking at healthcare, providing healthcare for the older population and also for the young infants in terms of childcare. Looking at housing and food production, agriculture, infrastructure, utilities, urbanization, city versus rural. All these different issues can come in to what they need for the population now and also the population that's indicated from this diagram that will happen in the future if time pushes on and the different age groups go up the pyramid, you can indicate or estimate what issues you're going to have in 20, 30, 40 years in that country and perhaps have a chance to plan for those issues before they happen. So in addition to general indicators you can get from a generic population pyramid, you can divide or separate the pyramid into different rates of growth. And if the population is growing quickly, slowly, or stabilized or it's not growing it's actually contracting and the population is getting smaller over the course of the future years and population period one which is the rapid growth the large amount of babies born but also you get a rapid decrease in the amount of people of older age groups so you can indicate a young population but a dying unfortunately young with a lower life expectancy. Then you get number two, a slow growth, which is more consistent growth, where you have more of a consistent linear decrease in population based on age. And then you have the third one, which you have a much bulkier population pyramid, indicating that the babies are born and they grow up and form a large labor force. We also have a large amount of older people in that last group. Then you have the fourth pyramid, which is more like a leaf. It looks uh, definitely different than the other three. It is a contracting population pyramid, which indicates that there is less fertility, there is less babies being born, both male and female, and there is still a larger percentage of labor force in terms of the overall population, and you have a still a large population considering in the older age group, you have very few kids. So each one of these four types have their own issues and their own patterns and trends, and they are also linked to different countries as examples. So rapid growth population period looks like this, where you have a wide and large population in that country of young people between the ages of 0 and 14. And unfortunately, life expectancy is lower, so you get a very thin and narrow point towards the top of the pyramid, towards the upper age groups, perhaps in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, where you get very few people live in longer because of various indicators or various issues in that country based on perhaps economy, healthcare, access to medicine, access to doctors, hospitals, pharmaceutical drugs. And you have this situation where it can indicate a undeveloped country, high fertility rates to have more babies than the parents. And you might have an issue with 
infant mortality as well. So these pyramids, these type of pyramids can be usually of undeveloped or developing countries, perhaps some African country, Southeast Asia, Central America, South America, but a rapid growth in population. So in 20, 30 years, you might have a doubling effect of this country's population, which again would compound certain issues, especially economic, healthcare, and housing with industry. This is a slow growth population pyramid, and this differs from the rapid growth based on the amount of people that are in the middle group, the 14 to 65 age group, where you have more people living longer, so the life expectancy is higher, and perhaps the fertility rate is a little bit less, and infant mortality rate is less, which can indicate a level of healthcare, economics, infrastructure, wealth of each person per capita, or general wealth of the country, GMP can also indicate the stage of development on the DTM or an MEDC, or definitely it's developing. So these countries can be up and coming in terms of new industries, the economy is booming, and they still have a large fertility rate compared to other countries, but it is a slow growth. So this slow growth may turn into, in the future, a stable growth pyramid shape like this one, which indicates different factors of population. First one is the younger age group, 0 to 14, is going to be the same size as the older 14 to 65, which means that the parents are having less children in general, so fertility rate drops to around 2.1, which is the average replacement level. And also the older age group is a larger population. So you have a lot more people living into their retirement age, older than 65 and perhaps even older into the 80s and 90s. So this can indicate a increase in countries' infrastructure, medical, economic prowess, industrial, the quality of life, the less need of having loads of children, the education levels, contraceptive levels, uh, can also indicate the career women versus women that stay home and just have babies and, and the age of having babies might increase into their 30s which then would decrease the chance of having seven eight babies and having more like two babies and the labor force is consistent and also have to worry about the, the older population which needs to be taken care of in terms of housing welfare social programs medical programs but this country indicates a more developed, a higher MEDC, so economic parameters would be more evident for a stronger economy, more money per person, and this growth is stable. So the population is going to be stable. So in 20, 30 years, this country knows that it's going to be around the same population as it was currently. So this can be a good situation to have for a country because it knows what to expect and the current situation, infrastructure, utilities and housing and food production is already in place for the future. And the final shape we discuss here is the leaf shape, which is definitely a different pattern than the previous three. This is a contracting population whereby a country's population is getting smaller every year. So in 20, 30 years or 40 years, this country will know it will be a much smaller country in population than it was currently or previous in history. This can happen to a country that is in stage five of the DTM. It is an MEDC. It is developed. It is also going through stages of having low fertility where women are not having as many babies, I mean 1.8 or less than 1.5 babies per family, per couple. So the decrease in population will occur and you have a sustained or larger population in the older age group over 65 so you have people living longer which can indicate a long life expectancy which can indicate good health care good food standard of living the human development index is high for that country and these countries will go through issues of how to 
fund the country in taxes because labor force produces taxes and trade and commerce and industrial manufacturing and all that good stuff is going to add to the taxes. But if you have a small fertility rate with a small population of young people that will be the future of the labor force and you have an old population that will live longer, you're going to have a strain on the economy. So as a summary for environmental science, and looking at populations and demographics, we can use a population pyramid or an age structure diagram to indicate a current country's situation, both for the impact on the environment, the population, the affluence, the technology, the stage of development, where the country is going to go in 20, 30, 40 years in terms of growth zero growth or a contracting population this would indicate the strain or stress or change of the population's effect or the impact on the environment in terms of land use pollution energy sources resource capture resource use population issues infrastructure issues utilities issues agricultural issues demands on the country trade so these diagrams are very effective at indicating or having an idea of what a country is going through currently or previously or in the future in terms of the effect on the environment. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.